If you're looking for a laptop for SOLIDWORKS, then you're in the right place. We're gonna look at benchmarks. We're gonna look at laptops from ascending order. So from a budget standpoint, all the way up to a high-end price point to see which laptop is right for you. And I think you may be surprised at, at the lower price point, some of the differences in performance. Let's get right into it. Let's get rocking. If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of any of these laptops as we're going through the video, you can head down into the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So what can you expect out of this video? Well, I have personally tested 80% of these laptops. You're going to see benchmarks in Geekbench 5, Cinebench R20, SolidWorks. You're going to see thermal temps. And of course, you can check out the affiliate links in the description below. But one thing I want to ask you is what laptop are you considering for your SolidWorks workflow? Definitely comment below. Let me know. We can talk about that. See if that is a good pick for you. All right, moving forward, integrated versus dedicated GPU. This is the one thing that really surprised me through all my benchmarking tests. SOLIDWORKS is one of the unique 3D modeling softwares that does not massively benefit from a dedicated versus a integrated GPU on a budget price point. Now, once you get up to the higher end of the budgets, you're definitely going to see some value out of a dedicated GPU. But on the budget end, I was surprised. So an integrated GPU is going to be something like the Iris Plus G7, the AMD Radeon 6 graphics, Intel Ultra HD, and then a dedicated GPU is going to be something like the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti, the NVIDIA RTX 2070, Radeon Pro 5500M, Radeon RX 570, Radeon RX Vega 56. You get the point. So let's talk about this. The Acer Swift 3 comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 4700U and the AMD Radeon 7 graphics. Now for an extra hundred dollars, you can get the Acer Nitro 5, which comes with the Ryzen 5 4600H and the GeForce GTX 1650 dedicated GPU. Now, what's the big difference? Well, not much. And you can see how much this surprised me. So this is an integrated versus a dedicated GPU. This is also a mobile performance processor versus a high performance processor, okay? So for SOLIDWORKS, on the lower end price point, you're not seeing that big of a difference between an integrated and a dedicated GPU. Now, one thing I do want to point out on the upper end of this scale is the Asus ProArch Studio Book. Now, this laptop is standing head and shoulders above the rest. It's because it's using a Quadro RTX 3000 rather than a GeForce RTX 2070. Now, the big difference between these two GPUs is their creation use case. So when NVIDIA creates a GPU, they created a GeForce, and that's basically built for gaming. But now recently, they've created a Quadro series. Well, recently, I say in the past couple of years, they created the Quadro series for workstations. And so this Quadro series highly benefits inside of SolidWorks. So let's get back over to this chart. Over here in this chart, you see a lot of different laptops here. All of these have GeForce, either RTX or GTX GPUs. And this has the Quadro. And so you're seeing inside of SOLIDWORKS for CAD programs, you're going to benefit a lot from that Quadro. So let's keep moving forward into the laptop recommendations, but I wanted to point that out as well. First and foremost, the Lenovo V14. This laptop comes with the Ryzen 5 4500U. It has the AMD Radeon 6 graphics. It has 8 gigs of RAM. I'd recommend upgrading this to 16 as it'll give you more performance inside of SOLIDWORKS. It has 256 gigs of storage. Next up is the Acer Swift 3, getting a little bit better processor with the Ryzen 7 4700U, Radeon 7 graphics, 16 gigs of RAM, a big win there, and a 512 gig SSD. Next up is the IdeaPad S340 from Lenovo. This laptop comes with the i7 1065G7 with the Iris Plus graphics. This is a great Intel laptop for getting started in SOLIDWORKS, and it has 8 gigs of RAM. Now, I definitely recommend this laptop with 16 gigs of RAM as it'll get better performance as well, and then it comes with 256 gig SSD. First up for the dedicated GPU, the Acer Nitro 5. Now, the reason I think getting a dedicated GPU is beneficial is if you're someone who's working in SOLIDWORKS, but then you also find yourself doing maybe like motion design in After Effects or, you know, maybe doing some video editing, then it would help to have a dedicated GPU. So for only a little bit more um, over that idea pad, you can get the Ryzen 5 4600H with a GeForce GTX 1650, 8 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. The Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. 
around $799 estimated price, the i5 10300H, and you have the integrated, or excuse me, dedicated GTX 1650 with eight gigs of standard RAM and 256 gig SSD. Moving along, you have the MSI GF75. This laptop comes with the i5 10300H, GTX 1650 that has four gigs of VRAM, eight gigs of DDR4 RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. Now, this is the first laptop we're seeing with improved color gamut range. You see here we have an 89% sRGB and a 54% Adobe RGB, if that's something that matters to you for your designs. Lenovo Legion models, you can get a variety of models for the Lenovo Legion. Um, you can get the Ryzen 5 4600H, get the i7-9750H. You can also get the Legion 5i, which is an i7-10750H, so that's the newer edition. Um, and each of these laptops come with the GTX 1650, um, but you'll see some of them, uh, some of the newer variants with a RTX 2060 possibility or a GTX 1660 Ti. So there is a ton of different Legion five models so make sure when you're buying it you're looking into the exact specs um, so you make sure you get the laptop you want i originally reviewed this laptop with 120 hertz screen and i was super disappointed by the color gamut range it had a 62 percent srgb and a 46 percent adobe rgb which is one of the worst color gamut range ranges i'd ever seen um, but then come to find out when i received my next model from lenovo they sent me one with 144 hertz screen and it had 99 percent srgb so it's one thing I hate that laptop brands do, and that's make a ton of variations of their laptop. But it's also good for the consumer because then you can get a different price point um, and still get the laptop you want. So it's one half dozen of the other. I don't really prefer it, but they do it. And nonetheless, we have to work with it. Next up is the HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop. This laptop comes with the i5-10300H or the i7-10750H. And on the i5, you can get the GTX 1660 Ti, and on the i7, you're getting the GTX 1660 Ti Max Q. Personally, for the extra uh, 50-ish dollars, I would go for this one with the better processor, but that's just a personal preference. Next up is the HP Omen 15. I think this is a great price to performance laptop. You're going to get the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, the GTX 1660 Ti, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD, and a great color gamut range of 97% sRGB and 71% Adobe RGB in the 144 hertz screen variant. Crater 15M. This is one of the, uh, I'd say one of the best price to performance in the whole lineup because for about $1,650, you can get the GeForce RTX 2060 with six gigs of VRAM, a six, six core 12 thread i7-10750H, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, and pretty solid color gamut range. Now, in a few laptops, there's gonna be my favorite 17 inch uh, price, to com price to performance laptop, but this is gonna be my top 15 inch price to performance laptop. Next up is the Asus Zephyrus G14. This is a fantastic Ryzen 9 4900H laptop. It is all aluminum, um, well, aluminum mag it's magnesium, actually. Um, <clears throat> and this comes with a GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q, 32 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD. Has great color accuracy as well with 91% sRGB and 60% Adobe RGB. Um, so this is a great thin and light on the go SolidWorks laptop. Next up is the Gigabyte Aero 15, um, and also included within this would be the Gigabyte Aero 17. Um, so I'll list that in the description below. Shares a lot of the same specs, um, but I'll, I'll list that out. So this one comes in at around $1,600 $1, for the base model and about uh, $3,500 for the performance edition. The biggest differences are gonna be the processors and the GPUs, as well as the screens. Now you're gonna have double the RAM um, here, but RAM can be switched. So that's not anything like that can't be altered. Um, so the things that are built in that really can't be switched are the CPU, GPU, and the screen. Mega performance, great performance. Both are good picks, depends on your budget. Next up is the Acer Predator Helios 300, one of my best-selling laptops on my channel for the past few years because of its pretty solid price to performance comparison and its popularity. It's a very well-known laptop. A lot of people use it for gaming, but it also works great for creative professionals like video editing, 3D modeling, and uh, different use cases along those lines. The i7-10750, the RTX 2060, um, 32 gigs of RAM, and solid color accuracy. So these two, um, the MSI Creator M15 and this laptop, the Acer Predator Helios 300 are very close in price and almost identical in performance. So Acer Predator Helios 300, 
and Creator 15M are gonna be my two top 15 inch price to performance comparisons that I think are good buys. Next up is my 17 inch price to performance uh, beast. I think this laptop is fantastic. At $1,900, you get a 17 inch laptop. You're gonna get 32 gigs of RAM, the i7-10750. You're gonna get an eight gig of VRAM GPU, which just dominates as you saw in the benchmark charts. And this model can be upgraded to 64 gigs of RAM which is awesome. Uh, you get two terabytes of SSD, 17.3 uh, inch screen with a 98% sRGB and 75% Adobe RGB. Really great price to performance on this laptop. Next up is the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR XB. This is the one I was talking about earlier. This has been topping the charts in 3D modeling um, and in video editing. This is a fantastic laptop at around $2,200. Get the i7-10875 with eight cores and 16 threads versus the Rogue Strix G17 with its six cores and 12 threads. So for a little bit more money, you're going to get a bit more of a processor. Um, and you're going to get a tiny bit less of a GPU because this is the Max-Q version, which just means it's more of a mobile version. It's a little bit lighter. And by light, I mean like a little bit less performance. Um, and you get 16 gigs of RAM. I would upgrade that to 32 if your budget allows. And then you have the 17.3 inch full HD display. Um, this is actually a 4K. That is a misprint or a, a typo. So this is a 4K display reaching 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. Sorry about the typo. Moving forward, we have the MSI WF75. This is a great laptop as well. And this is where you start getting into those NVIDIA Quadro RTX GPUs that I was saying SolidWorks really benefits from. Um, we can see the Intel i7-10750H, the Quadro RTX 3000, 32 gigs of RAM and one terabyte of SSD, all in a 17.3 inch full HD screen with 98% sRGB and 75% Adobe RGB. Moving forward with the Asus ProArt StudioBook Pro 17. This is the one that was topping my personal charts from the one I've had in my studio to review. Comes with the i7-9750H, the Quadro RTX 3000, 64 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of SSD and a 17.3 inch screen with 100% sRGB, 89% Adobe RGB and 100% DCI P3. The Acer Concept D7 Pro, a 15 inch laptop with the i7-9750H, RTX 3000, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD and a 4K screen with 100% color accuracy across all of the spaces that is Pantone validated. Great laptop, aluminum chassis, Good build from Acer. The ThinkPad P73. Um, this laptop's pretty chunky. It's a pretty thick laptop, but it is a pretty well-known laptop in the CAD um, 3D modeling space. It's got the i7-9850H, the RTX 3000, 64 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of SSD, 17.3 inch screen, and 98% sRGB and 72% Adobe RGB. So this is a pretty legendary computer within this space. ThinkPad gets a lot of credo um, and it has a good spec workout. The Apple MacBook Pro, um, I've not heard a lot of people be like raving fans of using Macs for 3D modeling, though I am sure there's some people that do. Um, but if I were gonna get a MacBook Pro for 3D modeling, I'd get the i9-9880H. I would get the Radeon Pro 5500M with eight gigs of VRAM, and I'll get this with 32 gigs of RAM. Um, that's the the spec out I think would make for a great performance um, in these different, uh, in SolidWorks specifically. In some of the different programs, you might be able to get away with a different spec out, but I think this would be the best setup for it. Got the color gamut range of 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. Next up, I think this laptop would be probably one of the biggest beasts inside of SolidWorks. It's because it has the Quadro RTX 5000 with 16 gigs of VRAM. So the Quadro RTX 3000 has six gigs of VRAM. So imagine having 10 more gigs of VRAM. This would absolutely dominate. Comes with the i7-9750H, 48 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of SSD, a 15.6 inch display, 100% sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB. This laptop is pretty pricey, but if you're somebody who has the budget, it would really, really be a great laptop. Next up is the Razer Blade 15. And as you see here, this comes with the same uh, Quadro RTX 5000, but it's an extra 300 or so, to, uh, $400. So you can get this laptop for about $400 less 
versus the Razor Blade 15 Studio Edition. Now the Razor Blade 15 Studio Edition, it has an aluminum chassis. It's gonna have a little better, better build quality. Um, and it's also going to have a little bit faster processor. So if you have that much more money, um, this would be a fantastic buy as well. Um, the Razor Blade Advanced has really solid setup too, um, but it's not going to be as powerful in SolidWorks as the Studio Edition. Biggest differences here is going to be the GPU and the screen. All right, now let's check out the laptop heat disposition, uh, dissipation. So this is going to be stabilized temperatures um, which laptop can cool the best out of the benchmarks that I have personally run. So the Acer Nitro 5 and the Asus ProArt StudioBook are going to be some of the two coolest running laptops, um, followed closely by the Gigabyte Aero 17 and the HP Omen, uh, and then also the G17 falls about middle of the charts. Um, so if you're somebody who's considering a laptop and you want to run cool, um, you can't go wrong with the StudioBook, plus it has the Quadro RTX 3000 processor. Cinebench R20 benchmark scores, you're always going to see the highest scores out of the Ryzen processors, followed closely behind by the uh, i7-10875 inside of that Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR. For the Geekbench single core scores, we're seeing Intel still at the top, Ryzen's making their way up there, but the single, bench, single core uh, performance of Intel is still better than Ryzen. Um, you see Ryzen fall about the middle of the charts, but it's a different story for multi-core as you see Ryzen pull up and get the top three spots for the multi-core performance, followed closely behind by the higher core count of the i7-10875 and the i9-9980HK. And for SolidWorks, finishing things off for a quick recap, as you see, the Quadro is the highest ranking GPU in my benchmark tests, followed closely behind by the RTX 2070 Super Max Q. You really can't beat those Quadros, though. I mean, they were built for workstations. We don't always see that coming out true. And what I mean by that is we don't always see the Quadros winning. Um, but for SolidWorks specifically in those CAD softwares, it is winning. So it is a good choice for SolidWorks laptops. Um, followed closely behind those higher, you know, 8 gig of VRAM GeForce GPUs. If you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of any of these models, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through that link, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you're curious about in-depth reviews of each of these laptops, you can click or tap the screen over here on the laptops I've personally reviewed on my channel. Um, otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here on the next episode.